Masters of the Universe. A DMT trip report by Lucid on Errolwood.org in 2016. First, a little background information to provide some context for the trip. This experience was going to be the second DMT experience of my life, and I was extremely excited for it, feeling a definite charge in my body as I picked up the bowl and contemplated the hit and what it was going to do to me. Having just had my first DMT experience 24 hours earlier, I was more than aware of the incredible rush that was going to blast me immediately after the hit, and to be honest, I was a little intimidated by it. During the first experience, I blasted through the veil immediately and was thrown out into this gigantic open space where I was shown innumerable images and events. The emotions that I was experiencing in that place were that I was home and that I had been there so many times before. These were some of, if not the strongest emotions I have ever felt in my life. It had felt like an incredible revelation was thrown in my face, and yet it was the most obvious thing ever to me. I was jubilant, and you can easily see from the first trip why I would be so excited for the second. Anyway, to the trip. 6.40pm. In my friend's lounging room, with all the lights off, and with seven to eight candles burning, three close friends are present and my mindset all day has been gearing towards preparing for this moment. My previous trip left me with an incredible sense that I needed a trip again, almost as if I was being called back into the DMT lands to be shown more. The DMT is packed in a water pipe, with a thin layer of weed above and below it for a buffer. After taking about 15 minutes to meditate and get myself centred, I decide it's go time. Empty my lungs and lean forward to the pipe. Taking one gigantic hit is the style I have adopted for smoking DMT, and as I released the smoke and leaned back into the couch, reality melted away. It appeared as though I was passing backwards through a portal. Total tunnel vision. Simultaneously, I was experiencing slash hearing the loudest, most electric shredding sound I have ever heard slash experienced. It must have been the fabrics of time shredding, because after this moment I was no longer in the physical realm. 6.41 to 6.46 This is the part of the trip that I have the most trouble recalling, and it was no doubt the most intense part as well. I distinctly remember the feeling of being home again. I was definitely, no question, in the same place that I had gone to on my first trip, and even further down the rabbit hole this time. I was feeling the feeling of infinity much stronger than my first trip, and it seemed like I belonged in this realm this time around. I was there for so long, it really cannot be put into words. In fact, my entire trip consisted of two distinctly different experiences, one in-body and one out-of-body, but both of which lasted what seemed like an eternity. Unfortunately for me, I do not remember much about what I saw in this place, but what I was able to bring back with me was that I remember the choice I was given when I left that place. I distinctly remember having the choice to stay in this amazing place for another eternity or I could return to my body. In fact, up until this point, I hadn't even considered my body or this world, but the moment that I had the thoughts that the drug would surely be wearing off soon and I'd be returning to my body, my consciousness snapped back into this physical realm. 6.46 to 6.47 Now, this is where the trip really starts getting crazy. At this point, my consciousness is back in the room I'd started in with my three friends, except that it's not really a room at all. Instead, I notice that we are kind of floating in this beautifully golden aqueous space, similar to the wavy PS3 background, but in an indescribable depth and definition. And I immediately understand this place to be where reality is constructed from. I try to sense my body, but it's completely impossible, and I feel completely separated from it. I look around to try and see my body, and I can make out my legs, but they are what seems like many yards down and to the right of me meaning the point of observation would have been somewhere above my left shoulder in the physical world. I look to my friends, but they do not look like they normally would. I can see who they are perfectly, but instead of bodies, they are so abstract that I don't even know what words would do it justice. My friends are clearly having a loud conversation with each other, except that the words make absolutely no sense to me, and they sound like the craziest combination of hundreds of languages. They are radiating this aura of power, and I feel as though I am in the presence of some kind of council, except they are not there to judge me, but rather to offer support and reassure me. There are many other sounds going on in the room, echoes sounding off in all sorts of different pitches. Everything had an incredibly alien feel to it. 
I distinctly remember being there and listening to their pure gibberish conversations for a very, very long time. And then out of nowhere, it hit me. The mega granddaddy DMT revelation. Literally, as if thunderstruck, I am blasted with this overwhelming emotion that we, meaning myself and my friends in the room, are projecting the reality we know as life together. And even further than that, I can remember feeling the other guy's energy within me. And I was overwhelmed with the notion that we were all really one entity experiencing whatever we want to in the physical realm, like constructing a play for ourselves to enjoy or learn from. 648 to 652 It was after this wave of emotion hit me that reality began to melt away again. It seemed as though the room and my friends' physical existences would not be there when I stopped paying attention to them. But then, as soon as I wanted to be back in the room, I could be, and it would rematerialise before my eyes. I continued to toy around with this newfound ability until I was abruptly sucked back fully into the physical world. It was at this point that I opened my eyes and took my first look around the actual room I had started in and then I realised what was coming next before it even started. You see, during my first DMT out-of-body experience, after my consciousness returned to my body, I went through a spell of about five minutes where I was shaking violently and consistently, but all the while I felt immensely calm and even pleasurable. As I predicted, this happened again. For about six minutes, my entire body vibrated with this incredible energy force that I had never felt besides when re-entering my body and DMT. It is almost like pure ecstasy charging through my body as my soul reinvigorates my flesh. After the six minutes, I settle down into my body and my skin starts to feel like it's glowing with heat. My head feels supercharged. Post-trip rundown. Immediately following the trip, one of my friends had a notebook and pencil handy and decided to start jotting down everything I was rambling on about. This turned out to be an incredible tool when I wanted to go back later and remember certain aspects of the trip, because there are certain key words or emotions in the notes that will trigger entire memories from the trip. It also helped a great deal in making this journal. Really, the main thing I want to discuss from this post-trip conversation I had with my friend is this. As I was explaining to them that I had sat and watched them carry out an alien conversation of gibberish for what seemed like hours, they told me that I had in fact not opened my eyes to watch them at all during my trip, and that they hardly uttered more than a few words to each other, and when they did, they whispered quietly as to not disturb me. This revelation absolutely blew me out of the water. Did this mean I was really watching them all the entire time through my third eye, instead of my physical eyes? Wow morning after. This is what I remember most from the entire revelation ordeal. I cannot remember exactly what the revelations I learned in that place were, but I do remember asking myself during the come down, will they allow me to share this information I received or should I just keep it to myself? This is a very strange thought and yet I remember it as being exactly as I worded it here. This tells me that a, clearly I felt the information was almost so sacred that people should discover it for themselves, or b, Clearly I felt that there were other forces that revealed this information to me, and I was questioning whether or not they would want me sharing it. I was very shaken by these revelations when I was in the moment, and not in the sense that I was concerned for my well-being or anything, but rather just completely and utterly blown away by it. I was also very shaken and a little scared when offered the opportunity to leave this reality for eternity. No doubt that is why I'm back here now. However, I was also laughing like a madman on the inside, knowing what I had discovered. It's important to remember that regardless of what I say now to try and rationalise or put the trip into terms of what we can understand through this realm, I was literally the happiest I've ever been in my life while realising whatever I realised in that trip. I also got the sense deep down inside that I wasn't fully ready to abandon our reality just yet. So maybe that indicates that subconsciously I knew I had more to do on this planet. But really, who knows? Another thing that is interesting to note The night after this experience, I woke up about five to six times in a sort of half-awake, half-sleeping state. While in that state, I could remember my dreams vividly, and I was moaning while laying in bed in something like ecstasy. Now I can only vaguely remember the dreams, but I've never experienced anything like that before, and I'm convinced my pineal slash the DMT had something to do, or a lot to do with it. Anyway, after an experience like this, 
I have only the highest hopes in regards to what DMT can show me about myself and the nature of existence. Still longing very strongly to try ayahuasca slash changa to get a more lengthy experience. Although there is no escape once in the heat of a trip like that. I hope this report helps someone make sense of something they've experienced that is as incredible as my experience was. Happy tripping.